We are now going on the video record. Today is April 1st, 2022. The time is approximately 1120 AM. This deposition is being held remotely via teleconference. My name is Joel Patrick, video specialist representing First Legal Depositions. The case number is DC-20-09893. In the matter of David Tyler Moss et al. versus Marco Princip et al. And the deponent is Anatasios Pazantis. The video, ah. the video deposition is requested by Defense Counsel Dubose litigation. Will counsel please identify themselves for the record? Gene Dubose for Defendant Bone. Frank Capua for the plaintiffs slash judgment creditors. Brian Martin Pro Se. Defendant. Athanasios Posantis. The court reporter is Christina Gonzalez, and she will now swear in the witness. Mr. Posantis, will you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear? or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you, God. I do. Mr. Pesantis, um, would you state your name for the record, please? Athanasios Posantis. Dean, before you go to your next question, can we have a couple of agreements that the deposition will occur pursuant to the Texas Rules of Civil Procedure? Yes. All right. My second agreement is to confirm what we had previously stated that uh, Mr. Posantis's deposition uh, in its entirety will take no longer than three hours. True? That's correct. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Posantis, where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up early in the UK, in London, and since I was seven years old in Athens, Greece. And uh, when I was around my 40s, I went to England, and now I'm in Canada. And you have been working with animation software for, software for how long? Oh, my first encounter with actual animation software was late 80s. And now uh, you... Uh, are you self-employed or do you work for one of the software companies? I'm self-employed. Okay. Um, and I take it you're self-employed as an expert in, in what? I'm a general uh, sole proprietor, but my main uh, work is I have a permanent contract with Maxon Computer, GmbH. And what is the business of Maxon? They create uh, software. Okay. And the particular software that we're dealing with in this case is what software? Um, you, you should be referring to Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D, okay. Now, in... Uh, What, what things did you, you, you have expressed an opinion about uh, my clients. Well, what, what is the opinion you have expressed about my client? In, in summary, you mean? Yeah. That she didn't do the, uh, the videos we are talking about. Okay. And what do you base that upon? Uh, there are uh, a few factors as stated in the overall summary. Um, are you referring to all three or one, each one? Well, what, what, what are the, the, the factors, as you call it, that you relied upon? A uh, basic lack in... Uh, her knowledge about many things in regards to the software that will be pertinent for her to be able to do these animations in their totality. And 
from what information did you gather that she lacked information? I reviewed the videos and I reviewed her deposition, her testimony, and uh, based on the, her replies on uh, the various questions, I came to that conclusion. Okay, so your opinion is based on the things that she said in a deposition, is that correct? And what she, uh, and what I saw in the video. So by comparing her replies to what was in the video, I came to that conclusion. Okay. Now, well, weren't there several points where she said that these matters were highly technical and she didn't go into detail? Yes. Isn't that correct? Objection to form. You can answer. Yes, she did say that. Okay. So wouldn't there be the possibility that she had greater knowledge than she was actually expressing? Uh, she would have expressed it. It's, uh, it's not a yes or no or too complex. There are things you can say that show that you have some understanding of what you, are, what you have already done multiple times. Okay. So you're, you're drawing the inference that because she didn't say it, she didn't know it. Is that correct? It's not only she didn't say it. She was, uh, how can I express it? So off the mark. It's remarkable that anyone would say that they did those videos. So, um, have you ever testified as an expert witness prior to this deposition? No. Have you ever expressed an opinion um, as to whether or not somebody did or did not create a video? But not in my official capacity, as far as I remember. Okay. So, um, but you have never seen Ms. Bone working on animating, have you? I have. Oh, you have? You've seen her animate? I've seen her do things in cinema for you. Uh, no, uh, you actually watched her doing the animation? You sent us some videos with her doing some stuff. Okay, well, then um, bring up exhibit one. The first one? Yeah, the 27th one. Okay. Uh, now, we're going to show a video that Ms. Bone has uh, prepared for this deposition. And I would like you to take notes and find out if there are problems with it and inaccuracies, because um, this, this is a rather longish uh, video. Am I allowed to take okay. notes? Yes, please. Okay. I, I want you to do that. Oh, it because... was for me, yes. Should I play? Yes. Here we go. I don't think we have the sound. I've lost video. Uh, yes, we took it down because to get the sound in, you have to go back to, to start. We're going to do some rigging up a model and we're going to use Bianca from the Spyro trilogy and import her from an online model. And this is how she comes. As you can see, this is an FBX file which has all the joints in with it. And if they don't have joints in with it, I use OBJ to put into Mixamo. Anyway, so this is how it usually comes. And here we go. Okay, so this and this is the body parts for the robe. So I'm going to have to right click that and group and name that body because we don't want to use those since they're part of the skin at the moment because of this skin tag here which was how I know so that's how we do that and then that's straight underneath so now we've got all of the joints here that we need to be using okay so first I need to locate her pelvis um, which is 
clearly all over the place. <laughs> uh, where is it? Okay, that, that's, that actually looks like the pelvis is highlighted. Let me just double check. Yeah, that's the pelvis. That's the pelvis. So we'll just rename that pelvis, color that icon. Pink, there we go. So that's the pelvis. Now what I have to do now is I have to find, this is the row, we don't care about that right now. I'm looking for the neck, there's a neck chain here and there's neck neck so we need to find which one moves and rotates the neck so that one sort of does it. What about this one? Nothing happens on that one and that sort of moves like that so that moves as well. There's a lot of necky parts here so all of them sort of move. I think yeah we'll, we'll do that one so that one there will be named neck because we'll be moving that as the head and then we will color that red so I know which one to move an animation. Okay right now that that's done, I'm going to now move the arms and twist the arms. So in order to do that, I have to go down to, I believe it's probably hips for this one. So we'll do the legs first, as you can see all the joints here, which some of them are connected to the robe. We've got our hip and if we open all these joints up, it will show where the joints are so that's connected to the foot so I need to go up to the hip which is perfect and I need to control click and call and then I need to go to character menu at the top and convert where is it convert commands commands create IK chain and that should be perfect. There we go, I see that. And I need to now go to the top where it is and zero out the coordinates. And we could rename this uh, our leg because this is her leg. And now we're gonna see if it bends the correct way in which it does. Sometimes it doesn't bend the correct way and you have to go into the skin tag which I'll show you now into body and you just have to locate the correct one and turn off the skin and then go into the weight tool shift set bind pose once you've bent it the correct way but we don't need to do that for this current situation because the leg is bending the correct way which is good just need to make sure control Z that it's set the way it should be set and we now go on to do the left leg so I will find the other leg and do the left leg okay so we've done the R hip so now we need to go into the L hip and locate the certain ones I need to do the other leg so do that control click not ball uh, that control L ankle, character, commands, create IK chain, scroll up, click on that, zero it out, and then L leg, and then voila, the leg is bending the right way and it's moving, it's doing exactly what a leg does for anyone, <laughs> it moves. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for the arms and we're going to do the arms now, which are this one and this one here. Her fingers aren't really visible because they're underneath her long robe. So let's see if we can locate the arm joints now. So they should probably be in around Claris area. That sounds sort of familiar where it would be. Yep, and I am correct. That is the case. So let's have a little look in here and see what we've got. Loads of joints, loads of joints. <laughs> so you have to mess around, locate them. 
Okay, so that one sort of messes around with the one up there. What does that one do? No, that one doesn't do anything. We've got this one, which is where we would most likely start and wrist. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, so we will probably go from shoulder to wrist and we will character commands, create another IK and we will rename it our arm because it's the right arm and then we will go into here and zero the coordinates out again to make sure the axis which is the green, blue and red arrows are straight and now we need to let's see if it will bend the correct way in which it is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, bend the correct way. Brilliant, wonderful. Now let's do the next arm. And as you see here, that is the IK expression, which is telling you that there's an IK onto the joint. Okay, let's find the left one now. <clears throat> And we go into here and we do the exact same thing <laughs> we did with the other one. So I need to find shoulder. Yep, that seems to be the correct one. And control click wrist character commands create IK chain. And do the same here, L arm like so. And make sure to zero everything out. And now we're going to test this arm as well. It seems to be bending the correct way as well, which is perfect, exactly what we want. And Control Z to make sure you go back. Basically, it reverses what you do. Okay, now we need to twist these now. So how we do that is we go back here and we Control click wrist and we go to character conversion convert to nulls and this will show up here <clears throat> and this will be our left arm twist which will twist the arm and we need to drag that all the way to the top underneath the other nulls and we're going to do the same before anything else we're going to find the right shoulder and do the same thing control clicking and convert convert to nulls and then we're going to do our arm twist like that drag it all the way up to join your best friend <laughs> your best friend and since these are nulls they need to be dragged behind like that and you can see the two dots are right there. Now what you need to do now is you need to go into the right shoulder and there is pole vector and then it shows an object. So where it says right arm twist you want to drag that in there and it connects. You can see the pink has just come up which means it's connected and now I do the exact same thing to the other one if I can now locate it. I've just lost it. Okay there it is and you click on left shoulder and you drag the left arm twist and you drop it in there like that and as you see it's slightly moved and that's exactly what you want because it's now connected. Okay. <clears throat> oh and that's a chatting. <sighs> okay now let's see if it works and it does. The arm's twisting you can see it on that one and same with this one the arms are twisting, it's perfect, that's exactly what you want. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the legs. <clears throat> Don't have a dry throat. <laughs> oh, we're starting to have a dry throat. <laughs> right, uh, let's find the legs. The legs, once you're down here, the hippies. Hippies! 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 Okay. Right, so we are going to click that and carry on. So let's do the same thing we did with the arms. Convert to null. And then find it, which is right there. R leg twist. And drag it to the top like that. <clears throat> and then do that. Do the same. Convert to nulls. L leg. 
bad at spelling, stupid woman I am. <laughs> okay, so we've got that, um, and voila, you click those two and you drag them out like I was supposed to. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then you go into here and then you click that and oh, it's just disappeared on me. How dare you! <laughs> And you drag that in like that, and it connects. That's what you want. That should have happened in the first place, but, you know, trial and error. Okay, there you go. Now it hasn't moved. Oh, my God, it worked. Because <laughs> I'm genius. Yeah. Okay, so that has now made it twist properly. It's twisting properly like so. And voila, you have now made them twist and now moving and ready for animation when it comes to the arms and the legs, which is amazing, darling. Okay. Uh, we are now going to click here, shift click, right click these because they're the controls. And now we are going to group the object and call it controls. Voila! Now you have here all the controls you need to move the arms and the legs and we have already sorted out the neck movement down here with the joint so that is the character prepared for walking and moving arms. Okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on the wrist here because we're now going to use pose morph with making fingers move. But before I do anything, I need to turn this robe off so I know what I'm doing. So go into body and locate where the robe is, and that might be it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just turn it off. And you can only see what's underneath the robe, which is exactly what I need because I can see her hands now. So this is perfect. She has nasty looking claws. Look at that. Okay, I never even knew she actually had claws. I thought she was like a human-like animal, but without claws. But let's carry on. Okay, so our wrist. You want to make sure that you put a pose morph on the wrist because that is where her hands are and that's where it's going to be moving and it will allow you to have all the joints underneath sorted. So I'm going to right-click wrist and I'm going to go into character tags. I think it's character tags. There it is, that uh, dumbbell looking pose morph and we're going to tick position go back to basic scale rotation points UV user data and the hierarchy the hierarchy allows you to move anything underneath the pose morph which is underneath the wrist here so that will allow me to move all the fingers with each um, movement so for pose zero we'll name it fist because um, we'll make it We'll make a fist. We'll make a fist. Um, so that's what we want to do. Right, so we go up to the fingers and we have a little look at what we need to do with the fingers. So, fist. Is that 100%? That's what we want. And now we've got to just locate the correct fingers. So I think we should start with rotating everything apart from the thumb because the thumb goes on top usually. Okay, so this is this finger, which is first, so let's see what happens when I bend it. Wonderful! It bent a little bit. That's perfect. So we want to sort of do that with each finger. And she's only got four. She's not a human. She's got four, so that's fine. And then you have to go into the other joint and bend that one slowly just sort of make a fist posture that's what you want and just take your time with it make sure you want to do it the way you want to do it um, like so and then you have to keep clicking the add button until you're certain you've made the correct fist sorry I lost it there <laughs> I lost it there Okay, let's have a little look here. Let's see what she's doing with the fingers. Okay, she's doing that. Okay, wonderful. So that's sort of like a fist thing. Um, now I'm just going to knock these down so I've got less to work with and I'm not so overwhelmed because sometimes it can overwhelm you sometimes. But uh, I, I, I take my time with it and uh, it's fun. So let's do that and put it up a little bit more like that. And so to find the other one, where's that one called? 
there it is gotcha okay now we've got to do the thumb and we're going to now move the thumb up a little bit see how we want to have the thumb and then we can just maybe bend it this way a little bit like so so sort of like that um we're getting a fist sort of motion going uh, i like i like in that a lot yeah don't have to really do anything much with that one i'd say probably i'd say probably about there is probably normal for the thumb but yeah anyway this sort of fist motion here uh we've sort of done uh that is now on pose morph so what i do now is if i just go to zero it comes out normal and then the fist crunches so if we go into animate it does the same thing and it's ready for animation so that's how you do pose more for fingers and if i wanted to i could add uh if we go back into edit i could control uh i could right click copy paste it in there and then 100 percent, obviously I'll just do it on both of them and we'll name this one point as if she's pointing at something so how we do that is we keep the fist how it is and we find the pointer so we're going to go in here and we're going to find the point finger ring finger is it that one let's have a little look nope not that one uh, middle finger no nope. index finger there we go that's the one we want it's just about locating and finding these things okay so we just sort of point it out like that or i could actually just go to zero i think yeah and then zero yeah there we go zero it out zeroing it out can help there we go and um zero that one out zero that out and it's a point it is literally just turned into a point just now and that is exactly what we want so now we're going to pose morph and if i just pose morph um see yep yeah, it's going into a point motion brilliant and that's how you move the hands you just keep doing that and you bend it how you want to bend it and how you want the character to express themselves in an animation whether pointing or having a fist or just having the hands out like that it's as simple as that okay uh that's pose more for hands okay so now i'm going to do the eyes and also the pose more for the blinking and the open and closing of the mouth I have activated the polygons for the sphere purposes, which are going to display in quick shading lines um, in order to show these polygons here. So there is that. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I need to get rid of this white stuff. So I need to just delete that. But I think it's down here. If I control Z and go back quickly and have a little look, see what we've got here. Yeah, we just delete that and ensure that everything in the eyes deleted and it seems to be that way which is perfect so then we need to go straight back up to here and we have the R eye joint and the left eye joint is this is what we need to use for the eyes itself so I'm gonna add a sphere okay and I am going to need to scale it right down because it is too big um, where is it where does the sphere go is that it just disappeared on me. Okay, well anyway, um, that's weird. I will add it again because I don't know where it popped off to. Uh, anyways, let me shrink that down. Okay. Perfect, like that. And then I, I just want to create materials to make it an eye colour. So I'll add the white first and then I'll scroll in and go to the very top where it's sort of like an eye shape that's what you kind of want so you're going to make it editable click on the polygons go to selection at the top left where the arrow is in the circle and you want to just drag and your, your uh, mouse around that create put new material do the black color and you want to just pop that on like that and now it's sort of made a an eye people and that's what you want for the character which is perfect it's exactly what you want 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we need to drag that down to the actual eye joint. So if I can find that, I will use the right eye first. And then I'm going to go ahead and coordinate them out to zero. And I just need to scale these down to fit the eye and concentrate on the eye. Okay, I'll make it a bit bigger, see how that is. And then we're going to have to adjust the joint to fit inside the eye. So sort of like maybe there, there maybe. It's just, you know, you want it perfect. You want it to be sitting perfectly. So that, that seems to be okay. So we're going to control drag the sphere down and we're going to put it in the left eye as well and then we are going to zero out the sphere and then we're going to do the same thing with the joint we need to drag it back enough where it's behind the eyelids here that are adjusted just so it sort of matches the eye itself so that seems to be about right okay so there are the eyes which is good and that's exactly what we need so now that that's been done we have to go into the neck and right click the not right click we have to go to the character convert Convert to nulls, drag it under the neck, and we're going to call this eye uh, left eye. And then we need to middle click because we have to go into the front view and find the left eye joint, which should be around here somewhere. We're going to drag it up to sort of match where the eye is, so I believe it's around there, that's the joint there, it sort of matches between the eye. There's a couple of different ones, so let's see which one's closest to here. Yeah, that one sounds about right, that looks about right there, so that's for the left eye. And then we want to control, drag underneath and call it right eye, and then we want to do the same and drag it over and find the correct I know so let's make sure they're similar to one another in which they appear to be okay and then we need to group these and call them my controls and middle click the mouse to here Okay, and then we need to open these out. So what we need to do now is we need to go into the sphere and we need to right click the sphere and then we need to add in a constraint tab. There it is. And we need to do PSR and aim and we need to do the same for the other sphere, which is connected to the other eye, which is constraint tab, PSR and aim. Now, for the PSR, you need to ensure that the joint is connected to the PSR so the eye remains where it is on both constraint tabs like so and then in the aim you want to make sure it's the eye nulls here so for the RI you need to make sure that RI is put into the aim and you need to make sure in the LI that the left eye is put into the constraint okay now we need to locate the axis to make sure it's in the right place. Mm, okay, well this might be a bit more easier if I actually adjusted these eyelids so that I can see the actual pupil, so that's what I'll probably do quickly. Probably should have done that in the first place, but carried away with adding the eyes. Right, so we'll just put that up there for now because that's basically us showing that we need to see the eyes. Uh, so we go back into the constraint tab and locate 
where we can find the pupil. Okay, yeah, so there it is. That's exactly what we need. Y minus Y. Um, but yeah, that is that. And the eyes are actually moving how they should be, like all the characters. Wonderful. Okay, so that's the eyes, and that's how the eyes move, and you can just drag them around with the eye controls now. Okay, and now we're going to do pose morph, which is the blinking and the mouth movements. So we go into neck, and we right click uh, the face down here, which is where all of the face features will be, and we right click the face, and we go down in here, and we find pose morph. And then when we add pose morph, it comes up with this uh, hierarchy box here and you want to click all of them except for this one and this one. You want hierarchy because it covers everything underneath the pose morph. So it'll cover all of this and that's what we want because it's connected to the face. All these joints. Okay, so we're going to tag. And for example, what we want to do is we want to make a blink cycle. So we'll rename the first pose blink. Okay. And what we will do, we'll find the upper and lower um, eyelids. So what we want to do is find the upper lips and upper lips, <laughs> upper lids, and bring them down. So upper lip, upper lid, upper lid. Say lid, not lips. <laughs> Sounds so weird. Okay, and uh, upper, upper, upper. The upper ones are the ones you want. Um, and you should just drag them down. And if it covers the eyes, you can actually drag them out a little bit so that it actually covers the eyes how you would want it. Okay, and then once you've done that, voila, you've got a, like a blink going there, which creates the blink. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing with a mouth pose. So I do mouth and we've got to locate down here her mouth. So her mouth is here. So now we need to find her actual mouth and how that's going to be moving. So we need to scroll down and see what we can see here. Uh, we've got jaw and see what jaw does. And yep, that seems to be the open and close of the mouth. So we're going to open her mouth like that with pose morph selected. And then if we go into pose morph now, you'll see that her mouth opens. So it goes, hi there, my name is Bianca. So that's how you do the mouth and the eyes blinking. Now we'd bring up number two. Again, keep taking notes if you will. You'll be here for a while. Well, not more than three hours. No, <laughs> I think I think we're going to make that, but. Um, also going to use this model to have as if she's holding something so I use espresso for that when I have all my characters that are like Bianca, Baldi, uh, Sonic those type of characters use espresso for the wrists to hold certain items and I'm going to show you how I do it so this is how I do it so I need to find the wrist the wrist um, if I can use my eyes as a wrist here so we'll use the right wrist I think what we'll do is we'll probably end up adding a cube so uh, right click go into using all 4d tags and click espresso and it comes up with this box here so you'd want to drag the wrist into the left here and we'll minimize that briefly because now that we've got the espresso tag in there it means that you can drag and drop objects into the wrist at hand. So if I had a cube, which is quite big, and shrink it down, for example, I could just drag that up like that and just shrink it to size. If I wanted to colour it, I could colour it uh, or whatever. So I've got a cube here and if I want to have the cube added, first I need to group it into a null and call it cube or whatever the items called because I then go into the espresso and I drag the null in and I go to the red part here click that and go to global metrics and same here with the left side of the blue square 
and click global matrix and then drag the circle onto it and it connects automatically to the character. Now, I need to ensure that I have the cube where I want it. So for example, say if I wanted it above the row, let's move it and rotate it the way we would want to have the cube sitting on her. So like that, it's connected to her wrist. So basically that's that. And now if I move her arm, I think it's the right arm, twist it, it's connected, control Z to make sure it goes back to normal and go to our arm and up and down. So basically it's literally connected to our arm now and that's how I have characters hold objects or whatever in which arm I choose by using Expresso. And now would you go to the next number three? Once I've animated the character joints and did everything the way I wanted it to be prepared for an animation, I then have to organize and sort out the model correctly. So I would group the pelvis and I would group it and call it char character or care for short because it's short and easy. And I drag that above controls out of the armature and then I can delete armature because I don't need that anymore. And then, after that, get rid of that cube because that's for, uh, for Expresso, uh, we have to add in a N side, which is going to be called Bianca, because this is how I move the actual whole character in the first place. Like Ballsy and Sonic, there's always that N side, uh, N side I use for that. Uh, we're going to scale it down to size, and then we're going to... Um, go to the plane and make it flat on the ground and we're going to lift it to where the body is like the center of Bianca's body is sort of how I would want it so for example there maybe get lit down a little bit more um, to fit her hips and then I'm gonna add the character to Bianca and the controls to Bianca and there you go it's it's easily uh, organized and it's easy to animate with once you've put it in uh, the character. So now we've got the controls and the character with the pelvis and all of the joints and you've got the IK, the Expresso, the Pose Morph and that'll be on all the other side of the wrist and all the face features that'll be done. So yeah, that's how I finish a character. Okay, if you will do the next one please. Okay, this is how to do lighting effects. So we can add light, for example. Here we go. So, add light. <laughs> now, uh, I could make this into a torch light, like a flamey sort of thing. So what we could do for that is, we're gonna need to add a sort of scenery to this. So I'm going to use this cube and shrink it down and make it look like a wall of some sort behind the light. So as you can see there, it's already doing something. So that's pretty cool. But you have to make it a bit bigger, I think, and put it over here. Then we're going to add a floor and we're going to put it down here as if it's like a, a floor and there's a building in the way. Okay, so <sighs> we are going to then, uh, we could change the color to red, maybe, or, or orange. We'll, we'll do orange. And we'll make this light, uh, we need to make it visible. Okay, because now we're going to go into the visibility and we're going to play around with the inner and outer settings. To my liking. 
Yeah, like that. So before I do anything, I'm going to render to see what it looks like. It's very, very big. So we're going to have to shrink that down. And there you can see it's starting to come out to be the way it should. Let's see what that does. So you've got a little glow thing there. And details is used for the outside. So we have here fallout. We need to take that to linear. And that will control where the light goes in and out. So three, for example, and it can go from 500 down because as you can see here, the light in is not showing on the cube and the more you do it, it shows in the cube and in the room. So if I render that, it's now shining and you can see that little visible light there. And what we can do is we can add some noise to this so make that visible we could click wavy turbulence and this texture here shows you the texture that it will be and then um <clears throat> the brightness and contrast needs to change so we have more contrast to make it brighter and make the brightness lower so let's see what happens if i do that and the reason that can't be seen is because the visibility scale is quite high so let's go five centimeters to five centimeters and five centimeters on the visibility and see what happens there and there you go you can see that cloud sort of structure there which is really good it is starting to look like some sort of flame and the wind down here is used for in what area you want it to go and it actually moves so when it's like rendered like a 50 frame scene it will show a moving light torch object or whatever you want to create okay so we could even make this brighter and make the not, not the velocity the brightness lower and then it shows more of the texture which is really good and visibility we change the brightness, we can change the brightness of that to whatever we like. So for example, I could change that to 250 and it's starting to get brighter, you see. So that's sort of how a torch effect would be in a room, for example. And there you go. Uh, also, I could potentially add a figure in here. Uh, there it is. It's pretty big, so we'll scale that. There's a scale tab in the menu, we just scale the person down and we can just drop him alt um, right click and drag into the program obviously and we will have him standing in front of the light and if I render it there is no shadow however if I go to light and go into general you can actually add a shadow and that should give you a shadow so that's how you deal with light effects when it comes to torches and lights being in a room and etc. Yeah, let's uh, do the basic uh, basic particles number five on your list. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I do particles and stuff. So for clouds or magical sort of things, I use um, an emitter particle. So what I do is I first go into where the physical sky would be put to put in an environment in order to make these this effect possible. I go into simulate particles, emitter, I add the emitter and let's just change the rotation to 90 degrees to make it look up. So when we have the emitter, make sure to show objects so that when it shoots up particles, that's when we'll be able to see. Um, I'm going to create and we have to import both pyro cluster volume tracer and pyro cluster um, shaders. And I will show you where I put those. We do shader pyro cluster and you put that pyro cluster arrow looking vortex thing and you drag that into the environment and then you have to make sure that the pyro cluster which is clicked is changed to user and anywhere between 20 to 20, 
25 to 50 on the world step size so that it renders quicker um, when you are checking render. Um, you then add the actual texture to the actual emitter so that you know what you're looking at. So the moment this will probably be a white cloud so I have to click play and uh, it's showing the particles and now if I render that it will show some cloud movements so this is how it always starts. So I'll probably end up like making a hundred frames or something just to get this going. And the emitter has all the controls. So here you've got the amount of cloud or whatever you have in render and editor and the visibility, the start and stop when you want it to start and stop. And the lifetime of the particles from like when it starts and if it stops at certain amount of frames. So we could have it at 35. Um, the amount of the cloud which will literally you can see it right there it's probably going to be quite a lot as you can see there it's like smoke and that's how much we've just put in there um, we've also got so start and stop is just the length of it so I if I put 50 here um, it will literally start at zero and it will stop at 50 like it'll stop coming out as you've just seen there and if I click play it no longer comes out so as you can see there, that's how it goes. So we'll keep it at 100 for now. Um, lifetime is the amount where it stops. So say if I had 20 frames, uh, it will play and it will just stop at the top there. You can see this part here is stopped. However, if I changed it to 60, um, it will carry on going until it hits 60 frames. So that's sort of how that works. Um, and you can use the admit to rotate the cloud and you can go into the uh, pyro cluster to change the settings on that so you can change the the way it looks you can change the color the age color all that sort of thing so I could make this uh, an orange cloud for example and I could mix different sort of colors so there you go so now that if I click play from the beginning and pause it's an orangey white cloud and it ages white with time but if I wanted to I could potentially change it to black instead um, see if I can get rid of that one yep I can okay I think that's the only one and then if I render it now it no longer has the white because it's um, darkening out like a shadow so that's how I make effects like magic and everything. Um, I could even choose to rotate it, uh, put frames in like that and just rotate the admitter and it literally changes to, you know, how I want it. Uh, I could change the amount of frames so I can visibly see what's happening with this effect and if I do that, it will spin around to how I would want it. And it's basically showing a fire. So that's how I would do something like a fire effect. So that's how I use particles with pirate cluster as a cloud and as a fire effect. I'm now going to delete those because I'm now going to show you another way I can use effects. Okay, so I go into particles again and I add the admitter and I rotate it how I want to rotate it. But first, I need to turn that off so I don't cause any oh, frames to animate. Okay, so we have got the particles here and I want to make sure it still continues to show objects for this reason. Uh, you get to see it as well and see how many you have. And we're going to change this to 50, the birth rate, because we want a couple more. And we're going to add a cube and I'm going to shrink this cube down to a particle size and then I'm going to drag that on the emitter and as you see it's actually just changed like it's sort of like a waterfall or a pool of blood or something or whatever you want it to be and I can color that I could go into materials and change it to red for example and just drag it on there and there you go you've got uh, red cubes that's another way I um, use the program to make particles.
So there you go. That is how I literally do particles. I could even, if I wanted to, I could literally even go to the texture and add a reflectant on there, which will make it reflect sort of like water. So this is kind of what it looks like that at the moment because you need to edit and adjust the reflectance. So like you've got it on 11% and it sort of reflects there. So that's what it would reflect in um, real sky or something. Um, so when you render it, it will reflect something if there were more things in the room, it would reflect that. Okay, so that's how you do particles with cubes or squares and clouds and different methods of particles. Okay, go to the number six, turbulence. And Jane, could you uh, remember to mute your mic, please? I will, sorry. Let's take a short break while we sort out some technical stuff here. Come back in five minutes. It's ready. Oh, it's wait a minute. She says it's ready. Okay. Which is actually a plugin to Cinema 4D that was installed into my programs for previous animations, which I no longer use anymore. And uh, it, I didn't actually know it was a plugin, so. I just thought it was part of the program because it was literally up here under plugins. And this is when uh, Brian, he actually put that on here for me and installed it. So I learned something new today. <laughs> it was actually a plugin this whole time. So this is how I used to use Turbot Safety for my animations. So I used to go into plugins and go into the actual Turbot FD Cinema 4D uh, tag here and click on container. And this will do the detail of the actual fire or whatever you choose to have and i'm just going to make it bigger so that whatever i put in here will be the object for the fire so make it bigger and i can add a cylinder in there for example and we'll rotate the cylinder down to the side and we'll make sure it's in the box like so how we would like want it to be or we could even scale it down if we didn't want it or increase it or whatever we'd like to do and then we'd go into the cylinder right click cylinder and go into the turbulent safety tag um, and do the admitter on that and then we need to go down to the value of the temperature uh, value which would make the fire possible change it to one just one zero is nothing one is fire showing up now you can't see anything yet because I need to add the plugin simulation window and I need to change the cache down here or cache here to interactive and click start and then it comes straight up with the fire and you can now edit it. Okay. So now you see here that it's not officially covering the whole thing. All you have to do with that is make sure you're still in the admitter and you can change the radius to three, for example, and you've just slightly seen a change and it's not fully covered. So five, maybe there you go. You've got five there. So basically the whole thing is now covered in fire. Okay. So you go into the container and you can change the voxel size with all the detail. 
to whatever you like. I like to keep it at four, I believe. It was about four when I kept it at, and it just sort of changes. You see, it's all changed up here. And you go into simulation, and you can go down into the temperature. And the temperature, half-life, it changes the size of the flame. So, for example, if I put it down to two, it will be really small, like that. Or if I changed it to 10, it would be a lot higher. So for now, let's keep it to three, for example. So now we have a flame that is burning three. Uh, Beyonce, Beyonce <laughs> it's a weird word, or Beyonce, is a, I'm not very good at exp that. This is just a really complicated word. Beyonce. <laughs> uh, yeah, that does the speed of the actual, um, flame so if I changed it to 300 it would be really fast or if I changed it to 50 it would be a bit slow like really so you can see the difference it's done in the flame um, so let's do 100 and the direction is basically where the flame's gonna go so if it's zero on all of them it stays just where the log is if you do one here it will go behind. It's the different coordinates of the actual object. So that could be like a jet engine. Or if I wanted it to be a flame, I keep it as one on the top, which is the Y angle. You can see down here it shows you the coordinate angles. So we'll keep it as the fiery one for now. We use vorticity for the noise. So what's going to happen is if I put 10, it shows you how many waves there are. Like you can see how wavy and fiery that really is starting to look. So I guess I could keep it down to five and knock it down a little. So you still got a flamey look there. So that's that. And if I wanted to, when it comes to saving uh, the actual uh, flame effect, as an asset to an animation. If you want it a different frame, so I could have it start at 25 and end at 100. So that's set to start at 25 and end at 100 when I'm ready to use it. And then to change the actual effect to make it look like fire, you go into the viewport preview on the Turbance FD container that's still highlighted and you use the shader option. And then you click on fire shader. and there you are you literally have fire that is that is looking like fire to me real good fire anyway so once you've done the time and when you're happy with the flame or whatever you can just go into the rendering option and if you aren't happy with the color you can go into the color down here on rendering and click edit and you can either change any of these or you could load preset and click on one of these. So if I'm not happy with that being that sort of fire, I could click flame six here and it will change into this sort of fire. And I'm actually quite like that. And I can always adjust the color to a different color if I'm not happy with certain colors up here. So to save it, we go to container. We go into cache here and simulation caches. Then we go into the browse. And we have to locate the folder we want to use. In this case, I put FD. And then we'll select that folder. And it does come up sometimes with others in the box. If you don't want them, you can just delete them and create new. And then you use this, uh, this simulating turbulence FD container window. You stop it. You have to change that to Kashi. And then you click Start. And it's automatically saving it for you. Now wait for that to save. Okay, and that's safe. So we could continue and get rid of it because now when we go back to zero and press play, it starts at 20 and it will end at the 100 mark. And then if I go back into the middle and click render, boom, you've got your flame right there rendered ready to go. Yes, the next one is number seven quick fractures. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the veronal fracture, which is 
uh, an object being shattered into pieces and such. So we'll go to my graph and we'll go to Verona fracture. Let's add a cube, for example, and drag the cube into the Verona fracture, which will come up with all these colorful pieces. And then you go to Verona fracture and then you find the simulation tags and click rigid body. And rigid body allows it to shatter into pieces. So if we go to dynamics, trigger is immediately and the collision, the size increment is how big the explosion is. So for example, we could do five and five will show a small explosion. Uh, if we go back to zero and do 20, it will do a bigger explosion and so on. So what we can also do is we can add a second cube to this like a separate second cube, resize it, and we can move it over here. So we'll want to move it way back for this because we're going to try out a collision. And we're going to right click the cube. We're going to add a collision body on it. And then we're going to go to Veronal Fracture and we're going to go to the trigger and click, click on Collision. That way, when we go into the keyframes and get the cube and then drag the cube into the Veronal Fracture object, it should shatter into pieces, like so, as you've just seen there. And I'm just going to play that again. And it just shattered into pieces because it hit on collision. And that's how I use Veronal Fracture. And the next one, which is eight basic fur. how I add fur to the object or area of my choice on a sphere, for example. We'll do a sphere. Um, I'll make it editable first and I have to click on polygons. So say if I want a section of this sphere to be uh, having fur on instead of the whole thing, um, I would have to go on here onto polygons after making the sphere editable and I would select, say these nine squares. Once they're selected, I go simulate to hair objects and click on fur, and there you go. Where you've highlighted is only where the fur is going to be. And if you re click render, it renders the fur as brown. And, and you can easily change the color, as you can see, you've got options here. So I could change it to blue, um, any kind of blue, and then you click render, and there you go. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog blue. And that's how I make Sonic's fur. I just go over his character and hit on the polygons and highlight where I wanted his fur to be. And there you go. That's how you add fur. But if I wanted to have this fur but not have the polygons, I can always come out of the polygons and just click the whole thing. If I wanted the whole thing to have fur on it, you just go on there and you go into objects and click fur and it literally covers the whole thing. So now it has brown fur bits all over. And that's how I basically do fur. And on to your next one, which is importing Minecraft map. Number nine on the list. To import a Minecraft map into Cinema 4D using Mineways. So I have Minecraft Worlds on uh, 
Mineways. So this is how we do it. We click on Mineways, the updated version that we have, and it comes up with this box here. And you go to File, and you open a world, and these worlds here are the worlds I have in the actual Minecraft game. So I could click on New World, for example, and it shows up with this patch of Minecraft world. Okay. So in order to get this, we right click and drag across the amount of the world that we want and we click yes because that's what we want and it should usually automatically do it for you but you can adjust the amount of depth you want as long as it covers to a light purple it should be fine I'm going to stick to 50 and the height adjusts the height so basically that's the underground and this is going to the overground so we want to make sure that we have pretty much everything on the overground so I'd say anywhere between 185 so that's what we'll do and then we go file we go to export for rendering okay and I could go into exported worlds and just save it save it in here and call it a uh, world we'll just call it world I like to do it in capital letters and then usually this is fine I never really adjust these settings so just click OK and this will tell you that it's rendering it shouldn't take long it has now asking me if I want to have stats continue to be displayed on the export and session, which I do, so yes, and now it's exported. So now I come out of this, go into Cinema 4D, go File, Merge, not that button, File, Merge, and then I need to go into the exported worlds and find the world. So we've got world, world, and all these different things. We want the one that has the cube on it, the really thick cube, which is the actual world. And we'll want to make sure that the scale is in meters because it's a very big world. So you click OK. And wait for it to load. Now, it's all black, and this is normal, because when you have a world like this, uh, after zooming in and out, figure where you want to put it, you have to go into these materials and you have to click the well, first one and then shift click the last one and go to uh, basic uh, color there it is and you need to go to the three dots on the side of texture and I need to find it here so this one here is what we need we need the one that has the uh, black shadow underneath and we're going to open that and click yes we also need to ensure that this says none instead of MIP because otherwise it will look pixelated and weird because this is a blocky Minecraft world. And once that is done, we need to go to basic, we need to add alpha, and then we need to do the same thing with alpha but with the white uh, underneath. Not this one, the white one. Click OK, yes, and also do none. As you can see, the grass did something there. So now if we zoom in and I click render, it now renders the Minecraft world how it's supposed to look. And that's how you import a Minecraft world into Cinema 4D with Mineways. Now the water here, I can also change the texture of that if I wanted to, to something else. So I could go into Create, go into Load Materials, because I do have some materials, and I'll need to locate the textures. So I'll go and Models for that, Texture, and it should be somewhere down here which is this one, I think. Yep, and here's the water effect. And I click on that, drag it onto the water, and if I click render, there's your water effect. Just here, how you want it. And that's how you have water. If I wanted it to look different, I could always go into the material and have a look at the strength of the bump and change the strength. As you can see, it's changed. But I have to ensure the displacement is the same. So let's have a quick look. I changed it to 56. So let's change that to 56 as well. So you can always change textures and mess around with them and see what happens. So now it's all more rigid looking and different. So that's what you can do. But we'll probably go back down to zero because this is a calm river. So we want it to be zero so it looks more like a bubble. Now see what happens. And there you go. It's clear as if there's no wind. But um, yeah, you'd probably want it around somewhere like 13 maybe, uh, I was just guessing, just playing around with it. And yeah, you, you look, see, you've got water and that's uh, how you change water and how you create water as well. You can add textures and adjust the bump, displacement and colour. 
You can also go into editor and click animate preview, which actually when you're playing it, it actually shows you what the water does and what it looks like moving wise, which is quite cool. Okay, if you would now go on to animating Baldi number 10 on the list, please. Animate Baldy walking and I'm also going to add some sound to him and do voices uh, for him as well. So let's get this going. Okay, so how I usually do a normal walk cycle is you import the model here and then you have a uh, keyframe, his body, and you do auto frames. So let's make him walk uh, 100 frames forward about here. Okay, and I usually do that, and he's going to do like a really, I think maybe he should be a bit faster than that, since that's a little bit slow. So then let's have a look. Yeah, that would be a good way to walk. Okay, and I'm going to make sure his arms are put down, because we don't want his arms in a T-shape when he's walking. That's really silly, silly. Do people walk around with their arms like this everywhere? I don't think so. They'll be questioned by people on the street saying, why are you walking around like that? And like, I don't know. Sort of see it in animations, don't you? I'm like, no. No, you really don't. <laughs> okay, so this is basically his arms now have been keyframed into the beginning so that they won't be in a T-shape. <clears throat> Now I need to move his character because I move his body first before moving his legs. So I moved the entire Baldi up to 60 frames. So I need to go from the character from here to 60. And then I can move his body first. So I could go F8 to play. And basically you can move his body around however you feel like it as if he's moving as a person it's a bit fast so we can always adjust it sort of like that yeah sounds about right just move it that way a little bit yep seems like a walking person to me and then you go into the legs and you do the legs back and forwards, back and forwards. So we got there and then we go into 60 and make sure when you control, click both of these, that they also remain from where he starts walking to when he stops walking. Then we're going to, let's just put it in 15 frames. So we're going to just scroll into the legs and... Uh, <clears throat> We're going to bend one of them backwards, yes, and then we're going to bend the other one forwards. And then we're going to go 15 frames forward, which is 30 frames, I believe, yes. And we're going to do the same opposite sides, like so, like that, yes. And then we're going to do something else interesting. We're going to click this frame, control click, and drag across. And it should do a cycle. So, let's have a little look here, shall we? One, two, three. Look at that little walk you got going there. That's fantastic. <laughs> and then I usually do the lift up as well. So, with the legs lifting. Because people don't walk like that. I mean, maybe in Minecraft, but this isn't a Minecraft character, you know. Okay, so now we're going to have to figure out which leg goes first forward. So, that is going to be the left leg. The left leg is going forward first. So like in between, lift that leg up like so. And there you go, it looks like he's actually walking properly. So then you skip that one and then you do that one and you sort of just do the same sort of thing. You just lift it up 
and here you need to do the same with the other leg like that and then you skip that one and you do this one too sort of thing so now if i go back he is now walking properly like a normal person and it's perfect that's exactly how you want it now i'm going to do the arm movements after that oh yes nearly yes we have got to do that and then we're going to make sure that that is clicked on both arms control click both of them and make sure that it's the last frame as well so it goes back to normal so we did 15 frames in didn't we so we're going to then figure out which way the arms go so we'll do the right arm first which will go forward slightly because Baldi's right uh, leg is going backwards so you'd want the arm to go forwards and then you do the same backwards <gasps> excuse me <laughs> and then you want to go to 30 and you'll want to put the arm forward and then the other arm back and then you can easily just click on these two and click this frame and control drag across because you have both of them highlighted so it's a quick way of just copying and pasting frames it should remain similar to the same walk cycle in which it was which is perfect now it's time for the head we're going to click on the neck here i'm going to go to uh we'll actually have his head there like looking away at the first posture and then at 60 we'll have it straight as if he's looking at something so that's great uh, so we'll, we'll, we will now watch him look around. So he's going to be looking around like, oh my God, this is crazy. Where am I? I don't know where I am. This is my schoolhouse. Something like that. <laughs> so now you've got him walking around, looking around at things. And then all of a sudden, I go into audacity. Get rid of that because previous testings I do with my voice <laughs> and I click onto the record button hi there my name's Baldy but I'm not really Baldy am I but I'm from Baldy's Basics and I save that audio export that as WAV and just save it in the game drive as Baldy uh, this is how I do my voices and then this is the cool part i go into here i add a null i call the null sounds go into the layout at the top right and click animate and then i drag the sounds into the bottom left where it says dope sheet and then i right click the sounds add special tracks click sound and then i go into the three dots up here find the sound and it'll start at zero frames. But if I don't want it to start at zero frames and somewhere else, like for example, 60, where he stops, just have to put 60. Okay, and then I go down to the startup again, where I was before. And if we play from the beginning, it won't start until 60. Hi there, my name's Balti, but I'm not. So now I can use that to do his voice, his mouth movements, and his eyes. And that's gonna be quite fun because now I get to do his facial features. Connected to pelvis. So we have his fist and his point in that. And, you know, if I wanted to, I could animate that. So all I have to do is crunch up a fist and click the record button on that. Crunch up the fist here, record button on that play and it's just a fist and if I want it to change I could go like that again and then press play and then stop again and then I could move it down like that and down like that and his hands come out again so you can see his fists move out like that it is perfect it is animation it is creativity <laughs> and yeah so that's how you do that and then I go into the body pose morph and that's where we've got the mouth movements. And this is gonna be the best part because I really, really like the mouth movements. <clears throat> Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the eyes. I ain't forgotten about the eyes because the eyes are underneath the neck as well. So we've got 
the eye controls, which is pretty swag. You've got this look. His pupils looking around at you. Could you imagine those eyes creepily looking around at you at night? That'd be scary. You wouldn't want him looking at me at night. <laughs> but yeah, we have to look where he's looking. Okay. So, say, add a camera, um, for example, and if I wanted to, you click on the box here, and it, when it's white, it's in camera. So I go to the beginning, and if I want the camera to be here, I keyframe it, and he's walking forwards, but then, if he gets too close, I could always go back and see where he is there. And then I could even do a keyframe here and go forwards a little bit to his face. So basically the camera would then zoom in a bit and then that will be when he starts talking. Okay, now I can focus on the eyes because now I know the camera angle's on there. So I know where to put his eyes and where he'll be looking. Okay, so we will have his eyes looking this way, and then we will just have him sort of looking around where he's walking. And then he'll sort of see the camera and see you and be like, Hello! Hi there! My, my name's And then just mess around with it. And then I could even, right, cross-eye him. <laughs> oh, it's funny messing around with him. I'm from all these I just mess around with it. Literally. I could do that with that eye, and then I could do the same thing with the other one. Like, just mess around with it. Make it look funny, make it look silly. That's, I just love this. Like that. And now I do the mouth. I go into body. And make him talk. So let's find where he starts. So it was around here. So we'll do about 75. So we'll have to have it start here. And then G and F is to go back and forward one frame. So it'll be like, ha! And go back a bit there. Okay. But I'm not really ballsy. Have a look at that. Hi there, my name's Baldy, but I'm not really Baldy. Is that yeah, that's basically sort of how it goes, but you know you have to go back and forth with the speed and the posture of the speech. So it's that's what's good with the G and the F. Uh, 
and then that'll be like Emma. Emma. You just adjust keyframes. And doing the face features is the last thing I do in all animations because it is the uh, longest specifically when it comes to vo voices. So it's fun though. I love it. Never gets old. Anyway, so let's see what that is. Hi there, my name's Baldy, but I'm not really Baldy, am I? Yeah, that looks pretty good for a quick one. Uh, so yeah, so we've got the ooze as well we've got to do. So we go across and do the ooze. Baldy. See what that does. Hi there, my name's Baldy, but I'm not really Baldy, am I? <laughs> See, this is the how I do this. Okay, so there's that, and then you got the mad and sad and shocked expressions as well, and the frown and the smile. So even during this, I could added him smiling so I could go from 60 frames and have him smiling a lot Hi there, my <laughs> that looks pretty creepy really <laughs> ballsy, am I? that's scary <laughs> but I like it <laughs> oh that's great I like that okay we'll keep that mm-hmm yeah okay I uh, that is that is fantastic that's fantastic so let's just have a little look to see what this looks like. Hi there, my name's Baldy, but I'm not really Baldy, am I? Oh, <laughs> and there you go. That's literally how I do my Minecraft animations with characters. Making them walk, making them talk, making them look. He looks pretty deranged to me today, but he is a weird character, I'm not gonna lie, and I love it. I'm also going to do the stretchiness and the famous meme legendary stuff that I do with the camera. So how I do that is I go here and say I want to change the camera. So I'd literally, right, go here and make sure the camera is set to the photo link that it currently is. And then go here and do the same thing here and change that. I'll keep that as 36 to make sure it doesn't do anything and then I need to scroll into his nose like that and then I'm gonna do three and voila you got the meme look right there you got the meme look so now it should completely go hi there my name's Baldy but I'm not really Baldy am I? <laughs> it's genius, it's a man master! <laughs> and then if I wanted... And then we could do from 20, 120, we have to do the focal length again and keyframe it here. And then I could just change it back again and do the focal length back to 36. Make sure that's keyframed. And ensure that the camera is back out for the stretchiness of his flexibility powers so now that should be hi there my name's baldy but i'm not really it goes like that uh different camera camera angles 
and how I mess with his head is like just go down to his neck do that and click keyframe in and I could just scroll in and literally stretch him like up and down so I literally pull his head up for example and they're like that or like that or like that and literally like that and literally what's gonna happen is this Hi there, my name's Baldy, but I'm not really Baldy, am I? <laughs> and that's how I do the stretchiness and the meat masters and everything like that. It's fantastic and I love it. And I hope you love these presentations too. Yeah, the last one, the uh, Christmas jingle ball. Okay, this is how I do my Christmas ball and Angry Birds. Uh, not really, uh, it's not, it's more of my weakness point because I prefer to get models online, but I'm going to show you how I make a basic Christmas ball. So we just add a sphere and we change the segments to around 30, maybe, maybe 35. And uh, I think it's Hexatron or something that looks familiar, I think. And then we'll name this body because this is going to be the body of the actual ball. We're going to edit that and we're going to go into the polygons and make the eye and mouth points. I'm going to go here and just go over and make a little eye or something like that. Something sort of the same on both sides and then control click and it sort of just drops back like that to make to make eye gaps and we do the same thing with the mouth we just click and drag over what we want for the mouth and then we go to the side control pull it back and it sort of makes a little mouth for you now i'm going to color this ball i'm going to color him red and I'm actually going to add some reflectance on him to make him look like a uh, Christmas decoration. Let's put it down to five. Just drag that and drop that on here. Okay. And now here we have to go onto the polygons and we're going to color the eye area to make it look like the white bit of the eyes. And we're just going to make him look lovely and gorgeous. He's got to be gorgeous! Gorgeous! So we're just going to highlight all that. And then once that's done... Oh, get rid of that one. Uh, we have to ensure to create and add a new material and add luminance to it and drag and drop it in there to make the eyes like so. I'm going to right click this and group it because I want to call this the red ball. So that now we have the actual body and the red ball itself. Voila, like so. Voila, like so. Okay. And let's do a pose more for the blinking. And we're going to do position and scale, rotation points, UV, and user data. And we're gonna go onto the body and we're going to go back into the polygons and we are going to ensure we create a tag and we're going to name that capital blink. And then we're going to just shift click over the areas we think will go down. So we'll pull that down and out like that. I could even drag it down like this for a laughs look. <laughs> like, woo, woo. 
but yeah, sort of like, sit about there. And then we do the same with here. And then you just pull it up like that and then it should, there you go, it gives you a sort of a blink motion like that and that's perfect, that's what you sort of want to have and yeah and same with the mouth, if we could just come out pose morph so I'm not doing anything and we need to click on body and color the mouth in and we want to make the mouth black uh, to shadow so we will just create a new material and we will go into color and go to the black color and just drop that in there like that and then we'll go back to the pose morph because we're going to add uh, mouth movements just a mouth up and down going ba ma 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 and how I do that is I just do the same sort of thing I go to the top here and I just drag it down and I go down here and get rid of that and just sort of drag it up something like that and pull it out a bit sort of give it different angles and that and it should just go ma 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 and to make it look more realistic Go to subdivision surface and put that in there and it literally looks like the red ball and what we can also do to the red ball is add the eye pupils which is to add a sphere and just drop that into the red ball and we'll want to scale that down to size and use that as the pupils this is how I do the pupils for the ball We'll just scale that and put that in here where I would think it would go. Something, yeah, something like that. And then we'll control drag underneath and then I'll drag that one over to the other side like that. And then click on both of those, right click, group, and we'll just name them eyes. And then you can literally just move them that way. That's literally how easy it is, and that's how to make a Christmas ball. So you've got the pose morph, the mouth going up, 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 and the blink, up, 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 up. And that's how it goes. Would you bring up exhibit one, please? Sure. To the second page, please. Okay. Uh, stop it right there, if you would. Mm -hmm. Mr. Posenitis, um, can you read paragraph four? Yes, indeed. <clears throat> uh, is that your opinion there? Right. Shall I read it aloud? Or? Sure. Yeah. Ms. Byrne Martin, in her deposition, could not correctly describe many simple Cinema 4D techniques which were used in the creation of the animation in the videos which are the subject of this litigation. It is my opinion that Ms. Byrne Martin did not create the videos referenced herein. A and that was your opinion, is that correct? Yes. Uh, could you give us exhibit two, please? And scroll down. Uh, let's um, uh, scroll it up just a bit more, if you would. Okay. Uh, no, no, other way, other up. 
could I'd like you to read aloud paragraph seven, if you would, Mr. Posens. Xantis. Yes. It is my expert opinion, after reviewing approximately 120 videos on the Wildcraft channel, which were allegedly created by Ms. Bone Martin, and also her videotaped deposition testimony, that her explanation, level of understanding, and lack of knowledge of Cinema 4D software shows that she could not have created all these videos without a significant amount of assistance. Her knowledge, shall I continue the whole thing? Yes, the whole thing, please. Her knowledge of special effects, fire, smoke, fluids, was very limited compared to the animation technique that I reviewed. Ms. Bone Martin's claim that she created these effects inside Cinema 4D without using third-party plugins is not correct because they cannot be created if the third-party plugins are not installed on the computer. Third-party plugins are tools that you install inside Cinema 4D to add functionality which are created by companies other than Maxim. Examples of third-party plugins are Turbulence FD or X particles that can be used to create fire, lava, and smoke effects. And that was your opinion when you executed that affidavit. Is that not correct? That is correct. Has your opinion changed after you saw the many videos? No. And why not? Because uh, I only saw what the Miss Byrne was capable of doing on March the 30th, 2022, when these videos were recorded. And what did those videos that were recorded on March the 30th of 2022 show about her abilities to animate? That she can do a specific number of things, which I've noted we can go through them but it doesn't show anything different insofar as the totality of these without receiving significant amounts of help. What's, what would she need significant amounts of help on? Um, other things. If, uh, if, you can, if we go through the videos, I can highlight things that were not present in the videos, we, the 10, 11 videos we just saw. Well, what, what things were not present? I, I don't know off the top of my head, uh, but we can go through the videos and I can identify various things. Well, I, I asked you to take notes. We're not going to go back through an hour's worth of videos. Um, uh, do your notes show any things that were necessary to the creation of the videos uh, that were not shown in Ms. Bone's uh, videos, the 11 videos that you just saw. My notes, notes are, you can answer if you know. Oh, I do. My notes show what I saw uh, Miss Bone doing. My notes were are not. The notes I took right now while I was watching these videos were about the techniques she used when making these videos. If uh, I need to make uh, comparisons, we need to go, I, I don't know how, through the videos and address points uh, one by one. Well, I believe your testimony before was that there were some things necessary for the videos that you did not see. Is, is that, was that what you said? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me what those things necessary to the creation of the videos, uh, are that you did not see? Yes, it's a, uh, it's a number of, of things. Uh, I, do you want me to give you some examples of that? Well, you, you, yes, I want you to tell me what it is that's missing from those videos that would be necessary to create the videos that we're talking about in this lesson. Yeah, the, these are many things. That's what I'm saying. It's not just one or two things. Well, I, I'm asking you, you told me that there are things missing. And I'm asking you to tell me what those things are. Can you do that? Uh, I can't because it's everything we didn't see that were present in her videos that we didn't see in the 11 videos we just saw. And what were those things that we didn't see that we should have seen? Well, it's, again, it's a large number of things. Uh, am I allowed to go through the videos? I don't know uh, the, the process of this. I can mention a couple just to give you some pointers, but the, the, these videos, we are talking about 120 videos here. 
And uh, 11, you know, these 11 videos didn't encompass uh, the totality of these, uh, of the techniques used in these videos. I mean, and I'm, again, I'm asking you, what techniques necessary to make those videos were not manifested in the videos that you saw? saw? Yes, you're asking me a question which is very difficult to answer in a reasonable, uh, in a reasonable way, way and a reasonable amount of time. We have to go through some videos and I can highlight things we didn't see. Okay. Uh, for example, rendering. We didn't see any final rendering. That's one glaring example that exists in every single video. And we didn't see any demonstration of that. And again, th there's a whole list which, uh, going through the videos, we can identify it. But it's a very vague question you're asking me. It's very difficult for me to, to answer. And I don't want to err in either, on either side. I want to be very uh, specific. Mr. DuBose, your, your video is not on. Uh, I'm, it, it should be. I, I have not, I have not, um, uh, I'm not sure why my video is not showing. Let me just see if I can find it. The, the video, oh, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's still on. Camera's on. The camera's on. So, Am I not but, showing but, up? But you're black for some reason. Okay. Let me, let do, you me have some, do you have let something just, covering the camera? No. Let me see if this... Am I back? Yes. Am I? I okay. Yeah, I just... Uh, okay. Um, that's the witness. I have no questions. Well, um, uh, I've got a, I've, yes, I've got a few questions. Uh, let me get everything situated. Uh, there you go. Right now we are still sharing screen here. Could you not? Could you? Could you get off the share screen, please? Get off the share screen. Get off the share screen. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Mr. Presentis, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Um, I'm just going to ask you a few questions. I won't keep you here long. Um, can a person who does Cinema 4D uh, animation, an artist, be self-taught? Yes, indeed. And at any age? Uh, pretty much, uh, yes. I mean, uh, to a certain degree. Uh, <laughs> Someone is a teenager, yes, certainly they can. Excuse so me, Mr. Martin, can you share your video? I don't think we can see you. Oh, um, yes, Mr. Capioras. Apologize about that. All right, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you for pointing me that out. Um, <laughs> okay, nice to meet you, Mr. Pizantis. Um, Okay, so now that we see each other. Um, so you would say that someone that's 12 years old would be able to use this program? Yes, indeed. Okay. And uh, we've already covered that Cinema 4D can be taught at any age, say maybe an eight-year-old, if they wanted to learn. To a certain extent, I have an eight-year-old and okay. certain matters of complexity, but to a certain extent, yes. You're aware that the videos on the Futuristic Hub channel from 20, uh, from, excuse me, from 2012, 2013, about when Hollywood would be about that age, 13 years old, are widely different than the ones that you're seeing now? Uh, the videos I have reviewed were posted on YouTube after 2019, I think. 2000. I don't know. It's that list that has some dates. So I wouldn't know when exactly those were made. Uh, I'm going to be sharing the screen. I don't think we need a sound for this. Um, let me go ahead and okay. Um, I believe it's this one. I do apologize. 
apologize. Let's uh, share screen, okay. Take your time. Technology can do this to us sometimes. Do you see the uh, video on the screen? Yes, I do, sir. And, and would you read the date of this video, please, on the bottom left? December 30th, 2012. Thank you. And now the, uh, at this particular date, Holly Bung would be 13 years old. Okay, I'm gonna push play. It's a 47 second video. Based off of this animation, Mr. Pazantis, wouldn't you say that this is actually widely different than 2019? Objection to form, you can answer if you know. Well, there are differences in the character and, and certain details, but this could be a choice. That, uh, what, what are you trying to show? Are you trying to show evolution? Uh, the, the context well, of the question. My main question is, could a 13 year old make this animation? From a technical perspective with, without any help? Yes. Hmm. Well, I can't say that a 12 year old couldn't make this animation, but I will be slightly doubtful for not technical reasons, but I would say experiential reasons like placing lights and all that. Kids of that age have a different understanding of how the world works. But I can't, let's, you can take my first answer that it is possible that a 12-year-old could have made this. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to stop the share and see. Um, Would you agree that if someone's using Cinema 4D for let's say 10 years straight, would you agree that they have the freedom to only know what they want to know about the program to make certain animations without the need or desire to be a professional? Oh, indeed. That applies so to everyone. And you would agree that an animation artist doesn't have to follow a rule in animation as far as the art is always going to be different per person? Yes, although I'm not a, a, an art connoisseur, my personal experience has shown that artists go their own way and they, they don't follow rules. That's what makes, makes artists. Uh, before, before this deposition today, were you aware of the program that Holly Bone imported called Mindways? I had heard of it, but I had never used it. Used it. Have you looked at the Creamworks Animations channel? No, I haven't. No. That is also a channel subject to this litigation. Um, it has Holly's animations on it. I'm going to briefly show you a uh, couple. Objection to the form of the question. I'm passing the ad here. Please hold. Okay. Okay, I'm going to share. Uh, this is a an animation 
uh, from Creamworks Animations, which is from the same animator as Futuristic Hub. Okay. Based off of what you've seen, is this widely a different animation from the ones on Futuristic Hub? Well, it looks different, but there, there's some obvious similarities. But then again, I, I don't really have an opinion because it's not very difficult to replicate this style. It, it takes no effort whatsoever to do this. Could you read the date that this video was uploaded on the bottom left, please? April 13th, 2019. Would you say the animator who animated this particular animation is a professional? I can't tell that because I don't know their intent and their context. You can choose, I can choose to do this and I'm not even an artist. And, and would, you, yeah. would Sorry. you agree that Holly Bone has the choice to choose if she wants to be a professional or not? Question the form. Uh, I will reply, it, it's anyone's <laughs> prerogative to to decide to be whatever they want to be. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Presentis. I am going to pass the witness. You're very welcome. I still have no further questions. We'll reserve ours for the time of trial. Um, will anybody be requesting a copy of this transcript? I don't I think so. If um, we're done, because, I need to read it off the record. Um, this concludes the video deposition of Anastasios Posances. We are now going off the record, and the time is one twenty-three.